What's up everybody? This is the Jedi. This video is in total submission to the universe. Total submission to the universe. Because I was watching something else. I can't remember what it was now. And off to the right, I saw a video about Cynthia McKinney and I clicked on it. And I thought, I need to do something on Cynthia McKinney because I mentioned her in my video that I did about the fake Zionist uh, Israel. That was my thought. So I clicked on it to see what it was about and I start pulling some videos. Something told me I need to go back over and just check my email you know, just to see my notifications that come in. And shout out to Nona Yah, because there you were saying, Jedi, I think you should do something about Cynthia McKinney. I almost fainted, Nona. I almost fainted. I still might faint. It's not too late. All right, there's a window. I still could faint. All right, I could go down during this video. It could happen. But I just thought I have to do something on her because the universe obviously wants it you know there are no coincidences in life everybody there are no coincidences everything is a series of divine decrees lining up intermingling with free will but always overruled by the will of the divine you need to always know that so I will attempt to do some feeble video on Cynthia McKinney because she is someone that we need to be familiar with you guys and especially well all of us but I also see her as a high inspiration for our women because she's not Fannie Lou Hamer of the past she's not Harriet Tubman of the past she's not Mar Madam CJ Walker of the past you know she's not one of these past women she's not you know Rosa Parks or Betty Chavez or Angela Davis or something She's here, she's now, she's current, she's Cynthia McKinney. Her father was in politics and in Congress. And then his daughter, Cynthia, became a Congresswoman. She's the one that I told you about in my Zionist video that I was saying to you, you literally, if you're in Congress, you literally have to sign your support for Israel. You have to sign the pledge to support Israel, period. If you don't, you're out. You understand? Everybody on fucking Capitol Hill, all 535 members of fucking Congress, are licking the ass of those Zionist devils. But why I love Cynthia McKinney is because, <clears throat> first of all, she's an African woman, but that ain't enough because we all, we all know that all skin ain't kin. So, but she is skin and kin. And she's fearless. She's willing to represent and stand in truth no matter what. And y'all y'all know that that's everything for me. That's better than food. It's better than sex. It's better than sleep. It's better than breathing. It's everything. Yes. Stand in truth. Anyway. So, first I'm going to let you hear something significant. Back in, uh, after the self-inflicted wound of 9-11 by this government and the military, thank you please, and probably Israeli Mossad, but that's speculative. Uh, if you watched my 9-11 video, you'll remember that I covered a big section there telling you that on 9-10 fake ass Rumsfeld was on TV by the way Rumsfeld was one of the people that was involved in setting up uh, to fake the moon landing alright so these people just need to fucking die off you see like why don't they die why like you see the same motherfuckers you be like damn that bitch is still living and still doing evil still but there he was on TV on Monday 9-10-2001 saying that the Pentagon couldn't, couldn't, uh, couldn't account 
for some $2.3 trillion in transactions. You come up short $5 on your drawer at McDonald's, you're out of there. But $2.3 trillion, oh, it's nothing. And then on Tuesday, all the shit jumped off, so nobody, it was nothing. But Cynthia McKinney, our girl, was on the case to roast his ass for filth and cleanse. And so I want you to hear this exchange now. This is from 2006, I believe. I'll clarify that if I'm wrong. Let's get going. And also turn up your volume, everybody, um, just in case. You know, I'm still perfecting this audio balance thing on this software. I try to make it so that if you have it at just one volume, you could hear me really good. And then when I play a clip, you hear that in about the same, you know, level and stuff. But sometimes I don't always get that right. And sometimes different clips have different audio. So just turn up your volume. Turn up the volume. Turn up the volume. Dance, dance. I don't know. I'm channeling. Anyways, let's hear this now. Turn it up. A uh, gentle lady from uh, Georgia, Ms. McKinney. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary, I... This is your 2006 Defense Budget, uh, Defense Department Budget, House Armed Service Committee. But look at the shade eye she just gave when she took the glasses off. We love that. Hold on. Let me see if I can get that queued up just... We're at 51, so it was probably a 50. Watch. Secretary... No, she's already got her glasses off. Ugh. Let's go to 46. Here we go. All right, shut up, Jedi. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Watch the move. Mr. Secretary, that's I the power move. Watched President Bush deliver a moving speech at the United Nations in September 2003, in which he mentioned he mentioned the crisis of the sex trade. The president called for the punishment of those involved in this horrible business. But at the very moment of that speech, DynCor was exposed for having been involved in the buying and selling of young women and children. While all of this was going on, DynCor kept the Pentagon contract to administer the smallpox and anthrax vaccines and is now working on a plague vaccine through the Joint Vaccine Acquisition Program. Mr. Secretary, is it policy of the U.S. government to reward companies that traffic in women and little girls? That's my first question. My second question, Good. Mr. Secretary, according to the Comptroller General of the United States, there are serious financial pro management problems at the Pentagon, to which Mr. Cooper alluded. Fiscal year 1999, 2.3 trillion missing. Fiscal year 2000, 1.1 trillion missing. And DOD is the number one reason why the government can't balance its checkbook. The Pentagon has claimed year after year that the reason it can't account for the money is because its computers don't communicate with each other. My second question, Mr. Secretary, is who has the contracts today to make those systems communicate with each other? How long have they had those contracts? And how much have the taxpayers paid for them? Finally, Mr. Secretary, after the last hearing, I thought that my office was promised a written response to my question regarding the four war games on September 11th. I have not yet received that re response, but would like for you to respond to the questions that I've put to you today. And then I do expect the written response to my previous question, hopefully by the end of the week. I wanna stop there. Now, Cynthia McKinney knows that 9-11 was some bullshit. And she had the courage to sit there and say, my office has requested the information about the war games that were going on on 9-11 because that's what they do all the time. They go, oh, it's just a war game and then it goes live. That's how you're part of a conspiracy and you don't even know it. We have recordings from the day of 9-11 that I played for you in my 9-11 video where when the FAA is calling and saying, we need some fighters to be scrambled over here or something, the response from the military personnel goes, is this, is this exercise or is this real world? And the FAA guy goes, no, this is not an exercise, it's not a test. So she is burning his ass right now with these questions. And she's a sister at that? 
and she ain't got no weave on top of her head? How dare this black bitch question me? Huh? Let's pick it up and go in. I thought that my office was promised a written response to my question regarding the four war games on September 11th. I have not yet received that re response, but would like for you to respond to the questions that I've put to you today. And then I do expect the written response to my previous question, hopefully by the end of the week. Um. Now remember, he is the Secretary of Defense. Just so everybody's clear about who this old shriveled warlock is. Uh, thank you, uh, Representative. The first, the answer to your first question is, is no, absolutely not. The policy of the United States government is uh, clear, unambiguous, and opposed to, uh, to the activities that you described. The um, second question, well, how do you explain the fact that um, DynCorp and its successor uh, companies have received and continue to receive government contracts? I would have to go and, and find the facts. See? That there are laws and rules and regulations with respect to government. I would have to go and find. Yeah, I, 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 shut up, Jedi. Play it. Government contracts. And there are times that corporations do things they should not do, in which case they tend to be suspended for some period. There are times then that, that the, under the laws and the rules and regulations for the, that uh, passed by the Congress and implemented by the executive branch, that corporations can get off of the pen, out of the penalty box, if you will, and, and be permitted to engage in contracts with the government. They're, they're not generally not barred in perpetuity. This contract, this company um, was never in the penalty box. If you could proceed to my second question, please. Shade. You see, she's ready and prepared. This is a serious sister. Y'all need to understand that. This company was never in the penalty box. Will you proceed to my second question, please? Like you lying ass whore. That's what she essentially just said to him. The pen out of the penalty box, if you will, and and be permitted to engage in contracts with the government. They're they're not generally not barred in perpetuity. This contract, this company um, was never in the penalty box. If you could proceed to my second question, please. The um, the second oh. question. Uh, Thinking up a lie. I've forgotten what the second question was. Because I'm thinking up I lies. Because I'm thinking up lies. I can't remember what the second question is, even though I'm fucking Secretary of Defense. I'm supposed to be a smart person. But because my head is trying to come up with lies, I can't come up with anything. I think Ms. Jonas knows it. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. McKinney. I appreciate the question. I appreciate your interest in uh, our department's financial uh, condition. And uh, we are working very hard. On Shade. Did anybody pick it up? Hear this. The second question. Uh, I've forgotten what the second question was. Because I'm a liar and an old I geezer. Think Ms. Jonas knows it. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. McKinney. I appreciate the question. I appreciate. Thank you, Ms. McKinney, not Congresswoman. You see, that underhanded shade. Thank you, Ms. McKinney, not. Congresswoman or chairwoman. No, no. Appreciate your interest in uh, our department's <coughs> financial uh, condition, and uh, we are working very hard on that program. I've just come back uh, recently. This I understand that you're working hard on it, but my question was, who has the contract? How long has that have uh, they had that contract? There are, and how much money have we spent on it? In general, we spend about twenty billion dollars in the department on information technology systems. Uh, the uh, the accounting uh, systems are part of that. I can get you the exact number for the record of what we spend on our current, what we call legacy systems, uh, and those that we're moving toward. And who has the contracts? Uh, that, that would be a multitude of uh, individuals. Could you name them. some, please? Uh, Three times she has pursued in this line of question, who has the contract? Let's start the questioning. Who has the contract? They're, they're not generally not barred in perpetuity. This contract, this. The second question. Uh, That's when he gets amnesia. We're over it. Come back. Uh, 
Uh, Ms. McKinney, I appreciate the question. I appreciate your interest in uh, our department's financial uh, condition. And, uh, Look, and I appreciate your interest in our department's financial condition as if you're just some person that just some high school uh, newspaper kid. You're 15. You run a lemonade stand, and you just came up to ask a question. Thank you, Miss McKinney. Appreciate your interest in our shit as if you're on the outside, you dumb black bitch. Are you following this, everybody? It's nuance. Do you understand? I'm trying to teach you nuance. 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 They're dripping with pablum in this. And we're, what, we're five minutes in. We're four and a half minutes in. Well, we're not really because the video, there was some other shit before this starts that was the person that's video. So, come on. I need you to be focused and hearing this now. Turn up your volume. Because it's not just about the information and the questioning. I'm trying to teach you, I'm trying to, I'm trying to point out to you the undercurrent that's there. There's this mass wall behind the other shit. You see? What do they call it? The elephant in the room or whatever you want to call it. Now, hear this. This is a shady bitch. Amnesia. I've uh, forgotten what the second question was. Uh, Alzheimer's? Uh, uh. I think Ms. Jonas knows it. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. McKinney. I appreciate the question. I appreciate your interest in uh, our department's financial uh, condition. In our department's financial condition. <laughs> and uh, we are working very hard on that program. I've just come back uh, recently. This I understand that you're working hard on it, but my question was, who has the contract? How Number one, she just said it there again. <clears throat> who has the contract? Play it. How long has that, have they had that contract? There are, and, and how long have they had that contract? How much money have we spent on it? In general, we spend about $20 billion in the Department on Information Technology Systems. Uh, the uh, the accounting uh, systems are part of that. I can get you the exact number for the record of what we spend on our current, what we call legacy systems uh, and those that we're moving toward. And who has the contract? And who has the contract, said our beautiful sister again. Uh, that, that would be a multitude of uh, individuals. Could you have. name some, please? Uh, Could you well, name off some? Off the top of the, uh, my head, well, I would rather... Oh, I can't name off the top of my head. Well, uh, cause I'm a lying white whore, so uh, I'd have to defer. And uh, Massa? No, I'd rather provide well, that for the record. That's not privileged information, is it? I'm sure it's not. Well, please. Yeah. And I, we still have time, so please. I would be glad to provide for the record. I don't want to talk from the top of my head and be incorrect. The uh, on your first question, I'm advised. Another lying whore. He's lying, and she's lying. So, but Cynthia's ready for the ass. Now, here comes the fucking old hermit. ...advised by Dr. Chu that it was not the corporation that was engaged in the activities you characterized, but I'm told it was an employee of the corporation, and uh, it was some years ago in the Balkans that that took place. It's my understanding that it continues to take place, and... Is that, that right? Yes. Well, if you can I'm, give me information to I'm that effect... I'm sure you we will... are interested in all of the information that I have, and I'll be more than happy to provide it to Good. you. Good. Thank you. But I would also like to get information from you. Okay. For example, the information that I just requested about who has those contracts. Again, she said it. Certainly. Let me uh, okay. assure the gentle lady that uh, we'll make sure that this uh, in exchange of information takes place, and... Uh, uh, Mr. Secretary, if you can get back with us on the dying core uh, we, we uh, will, story, uh, we'll uh, get that to the gentlelady. lady. We'll get Thank back, you, Mr. Chairman. We'll get back on both of the first two questions, but uh, the, the Congresswoman has raised the other question twice now, and I'd like to have General Myers respond because you, you mentioned it in the last hearing, and I think it would be helpful to get the answer, even though okay. we're on red, if you okay. don't mind, Mr. Chairman. Uh, General Myers, go right ahead. But I would like to have th the answer in writing as well, as I thought my office was promised. As I thought my office was promised. She's giving them shade. Yes, Cynthia, my girl. Red, if you okay. don't mind, Mr. Chairman. Uh, General Myers, go right ahead. But I would like to have th the answer in writing as well, as I thought my office was promised. Okay, I don't know about the promise, uh, uh, Congresswoman, but could you repeat the question to make sure I'm answering the right question? This is 9-11 question. The question was, we had four war games going on on September 11th, and the question that I tried to pose before the uh, secretary had to go to lunch was um, whether or not the 
activities of the four war games going on on September 11th actually impaired our ability to, to respond to the attacks? Uh, the answer to the and that goes back to what I shared with you. When the FAA calls and says, we need some F-16 scrambled over here immediately. And the guy goes, is this an exercise? He goes, he goes, he goes, is this real war or is this an exercise? He goes, no, it's not an exercise. It's not a test. Like, move your shit. You see? And so she's saying what we all want to know. Well, we know. But I'm just, just for the sake of conversation. What we all want to know. She's saying, and she's been, been, being diplomatic, but, but very poignant to say, I want to know with those four war games going on, by the way, they all mirrored exactly what happened on 9-11, by the way. They just happened to be doing those exact same exercises and, oh my God, that exact same thing happened. Who knew? Damn it if I'd only been in Vegas. You see. But she's saying we want to know what was, and did they impair our response capability? Was um, whether or not the activities of the four war games going on on September 11th actually impaired our ability to, to respond to the attacks? Uh, the answer to the question is no, it did not impair our response. In fact, uh, General Eberhardt, who was in the commander of North American Aerospace Defense Command, as he testified in front of the 9-11 Commission, I believe, I believe he told him that it enhanced our ability to respond. See, he's stressing, I believe, I believe. He tried to give himself cover. He's going to tell a lie. So he can come back and say, well, I said I believed. I wasn't sure what he said, but I believed he had said it. He's a fucking four-star general. <laughs> and the fucking Secretary of Defense is sitting right there next to him. And they don't know a damn thing. Oh, they know. They know. But she's got these white devils up on their ass. How dare this black bitch ask us questions about our evil. Play it, Jedi. Actually impaired our ability to, to respond to the attacks? Uh, the answer to the question is no, it did not impair our response. In fact, uh, General Eberhardt, who was in the commander of North American Aerospace Defense Command, as he testified in front of the 9-11 Commission, I believe, I believe he told him that it enhanced our ability to respond, given that NORAD didn't have the overall responsibility for responding to the attacks today. That was uh, an FAA responsibility. But they were... Uh, there were two CPXs. There was one Department of Justice exercise that didn't have anything to do with the, the other three. And there was an actual operation ongoing because there was some Russian bomber activity up near Alaska. So we Let me ask you this then, who was in charge of managing those war games? And, uh, this, this and General, uh, why don't you give the, uh, uh, give the best answer you can here in a short period of time. Wait now. Uh, the general lady wants this asshole interrupts. She just asked a very important question, which could have been answered in half of a millisecond. Who was in charge of these exercises? And then this devil, demonic thing comes in and starts his little interference. You see? Very crafty. Hear this. Actual operation ongoing because there was some Russian bomber activity up near Alaska. So Let me ask you this then. Who was in charge of managing those war games and uh this, this in general was, look there was uh, enough time to answer why don't you give the uh there was enough time to answer i got to do that one more time cpx's there was one <coughs> department of justice exercise that didn't have anything to do with the the other three and there was an actual operation ongoing because there was some russian bomber activity up near alaska so let me ask you this then who was in charge of managing those war games who was in charge of managing those war games? All you got to do is say a name. So I'm just going to say Cynthia McKinney when I play it. And play. Cynthia and, McKinney. Uh, in general, uh, and they're still him and hawing. Why don't you give the, uh, give the best answer you can? See, and he comes in. Well, just, just, general, why don't you give the best answer you can? And here in a short period of time. and we'll The best answer you can? This isn't a guess. Who was in charge of the damn war games? You're a fucking four-star general. Give the best answer you can as if it's some unknown quantity uh, of calculus. Just give the best answer you can. We know you only know basic math and, and, and algebra, but just give the best answer you can. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Near Alaska. So Let me ask you this then. Who was in 
charge of managing those war games. And, uh, yes, and General, uh, why don't you give the uh, uh, give the best answer you can here in a short period of time, and we'll. Uh, the general lady wants to get a written answer anyway, and then we can move on. Uh, the important to other thing folks. Is to realize is North American Aerospace Defense Command was responsible. Uh, these are uh, command post exercises. What that means is all the battle positions that no, who, uh, bitch. are normally not filled are indeed filled. He's giving you all this hocus. Who? Who? Damn it! Who? So it was an easy transition from an exercise into a real world situation. It actually enhanced the, the response. Otherwise, it would take somewhere between 30 minutes and a couple of hours to fill those positions, those battle spaces with the, the, the right staff officers. Mr. Chairman, begging your indulgence, was September 11th declared a national security special event day? I have to look back, I do not know. You mean after the fact or before the- No, because of the activities going on that had been scheduled at the United Nations that day. I'd have to go back and check. I have to go back and check. Okay, uh, thank the general lady. The, uh, Look, and he's giving her that. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh my God! Now I want you to, to hear a speech from her. I'm not sure of the context on this, you guys. I'm not sure where she's at. But hear this because she's also talking about the Zionist thing. This is very important. I want you to listen to this. Okay. This is a 9-11 Truth Conference in Kuala Lumpur in 2012. That's what it is. All right, hear this. It's 15 minutes. I want to take you back for just a moment to 2001. Republicans had just stolen the U.S. presidency taking office against the will of U.S. voters in the 2000 election. Hear her now. She goes, I want to take you back. The Republicans have just stolen the election. Hear this now. Turn up your volume, everybody. Of U.S. voters in the 2000 election. Wait, shut up. And as a member again. of just a moment, to, I want to take you back for just a moment to 2001. Republicans had just stolen the U.S. presidency, taking office against the will of U.S. voters in the 2000 election. And as a member of Congress, I investigated that. I was the only member of Congress to do so. After that, the big issue of 2001 was the Durban World Conference Against Racism. <coughs> I headed the Congressional Black Caucus Task Force and went head to head and toe-to-toe -to -toe with the pro-Israel lobby that was determined to have the U.S. boycott the conference so that Zionists wouldn't have to defend their practices against the Palestinians. So they huh? did everything in their considerable power to win the argument. Hear that. But it was such a bad edit the Congressional Black Caucus Task member of Congress to do so. After that, the big issue of 2001 was the Durban World Conference Against Racism. I the Durban World Conference Against Racism was the big issue. Headed the Congressional Black Caucus Task Force. She headed the Congressional Black Caucus Task Force. Task Force and went head to head and toe to toe with the pro Israel lobby that was determined to have the U.S. boycott the conference so that Zionists wouldn't have to defend their practices against the Palestinians. Think about that. You see, Israel is not a holy place. It is the seat of the devil. Peer at the goddamn end. Nothing holy about that place. Or those damn people. Nothing. So they did everything in their considerable power to win the argument. But it was such a bad argument. And I was just as determined to have the U.S. participate in the conference. And so they lost. And I went to Durban. And I took five members of the Congressional Black Caucus there with me. I had commissioned an investigation into murders of members of the Black Panther Party that had occurred as a result of a U.S. government program that targeted individuals because of their political beliefs. Hear her. That's a serious sister. That is a serious sister. Do you understand what I'm telling you right now, here, right now? 
Oh my god, yes. Get him, Queen. I hand delivered that investigation to Mary Robinson, who was the High Commissioner for Human Rights at the UN at the time. I was particularly outraged about Durban because I was expected to give up the opportunity to, dis to discuss my grievances so they could avoid having a discussion about Zionism. So indigenous people from all over the planet being robbed of their sacred lands and even their right to life were not seen to be as an important part of a conversation. Africans still stinging from the loss of millions of individuals snatched from the continent in the massive transatlantic slave trade were to remain mute about how that crime against humanity affected them. Hmm? She's doing everything from the Black Panther to goddamn it slavery. Oh my God, I love this sister. Blacks in the diaspora, quiet about the indignity suffered on a daily basis. We were supposed to just forget our pain and suffer in silence because the Zionists didn't want us to talk about Palestine. To be honest, I didn't even know what a Zionist was. All I knew was that I had been asked to sign a pledge for Israel. Hear that? I had been asked to sign a pledge for Israel. What a Zionist was. All I knew was that I had been asked to sign a pledge for Israel when I first became a candidate for Congress. And after refusing to do so, my congressional career became trench warfare, hand-to-hand -hand combat, just to remain in the Congress. See? Ever since my refusal to sign that pledge for Israel, the pro-Israel lobby let me know that my political neck was in the hangman's noose. Now, the largest lobby on Capitol Hill, everybody, is the fucking Zionist lobby. That's the largest lobby group on damn it, Capitol Hill. They're the ones getting into all these offices, paying off Congress people, making them lick the ass of fucking Zionists as Israel and all the bullshit. You understand? They're bigger than even the pharmaceutical companies and everybody else. They're big. They're big. Take it back to Scotia and go on. Israel lobby let me know that my political net was in the hangman's noose. It was the pro-Israel lobby that decided to tighten that noose when I questioned the Bush administration's actions on Now these are the Orthodox Jews, the cousin to the Muslim. You see, Zionism is a organized is is state organized terror. Zionism is the cause of Mideast bloodshed. You see? Those are the good Jews right there. When I questioned the Bush administration's actions on and after 911, I asked the question then, what did the administration know and when did it know it about the tragic events of September 11th? I was in Washington that day and experienced the most chaotic and confusing day of my life. But my gut told me that this was nothing new. I was experiencing what I had read about so many times before. I figuratively stepped outside of myself and watched as we members of Congress gathered on the Capitol steps. I was a critical observer at the members only briefings and I noticed everything. When I traveled to Europe and England, I encouraged citizen investigations of 911. And I learned that to question 911 was to be labeled an anti Semite. Even more bizarre. See there? They immediately try and la you, uh, label you an anti Semite as soon as you do some shit they don't like. Fuck them. They're not Semitic, so you can't be anti somebody that's not something that's that. Fuck all of them. And the fat, greasy bitch that gave birth to them, that fat bitch. One. And I learned. That to question 911 was to be labeled an anti Semite. Even more bizarre, those who questioned the tragedy were equated with Holocaust deniers. And I wondered <laughs> why. By demanding an independent investigation of what happened on September 11th, I became a political pariah. I was vilified in the press, and the news tightened around. 
Brown Mag District. The pro-Israel lobby found someone to run against me, gave her over a million dollars for her campaign, and then managed to make the election turn out the wrong way for me. Needless to say, I know now what a Zionist is. I wanted to take you back to those days because I think it's important for us as a people, as people of color, to understand where we were in the heady days of Durban. Europe abandoned the U.S. position and admitted that the transatlantic slave, tra slave trade was a crime against humanity. I met indigenous people from Latin America, from Peru, Ecuador, black people from Brazil and Colombia, First Nations people from all over North America, and we were making our way together. And then, on the morning of September 11, 2001, the World Trade Center towers came falling down. The topic of conversation immediately changed, and today humanity is on the brink. We lost a lot that day. A new level of criminality and immorality has been breached. Whole societies are being wiped off the map while a sitting president of the United States openly advocates targeted assassination of U.S. citizens on U.S. soil. State crimes against democracy in the name of democracy have become the norm. And as with colonialism and neocolonialism, even our identity has become so warped we don't know who we are or what we should stand for, and so we are misled, acting on behalf of someone else's agenda, even to our own ultimate demise. I gotta interrupt and say this, y'all. I love so much when I see powerful women. To me, watching even this, this is the expression of the power of a woman. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Like, I don't want that to be missed on you right here. I, I, I need you to really take in that. Take that in. Take that in. Take that in. Take that in. That this is a woman, an African woman, presenting truth, standing against evil with poise and grace and beauty strength and power i love to see women go like that i love that shit oh my god i can't Ugh. i'm gonna need to i'm gonna need to ice off y'all i'm just gonna need to ice off all right let's roll it all of this is the progeny of 11 september 2001 that's hot so what really happened on 11th of september much more than I can say within my short time today. But the people all over the world hunger for the truth and refuse to let the lies stand. We need to know more. I'm saddened when I hear people say they are afraid. Afraid of what? Knowing that your government has been hijacked and that those in charge will lie to you? Such knowledge should actually set us free to do what we must to maintain our own dignity. And as if one nine one one I can't let that go by. You hear what she said? For what? She said such knowledge should set us free to do what we must. That's akin to what I always tell you. Knowledge equals action. Knowledge equals action. And you don't let this white devil tell you how you're supposed to respond to anything. Hear that again. That is wisdom and that those in charge will lie to you? Such knowledge should actually set us free to do what we must to maintain our own dignity. And as if 1911 wasn't convincing enough of the need to fight Islamic terrorists. Wait, that graphic was important. This is all the shit. That when you support this shit, you're supporting Israel. Now, how many of y'all non- Self-control asses can do without Coca-Cola, huh? Anyone who can do without Sprite, huh? McDonald's, huh? Kraft fucking cheese that clogs up your arteries any goddamn way, huh? CNN, huh? Huh? 
Huggies, I think that is. Is that Huggies? Revlon, for all y'all heifers wearing this goddamn it makeup and bullshit, I'm over it. Johnson and goddamn it Johnson. Uh, PepsiCo. See? Yeah, but some of these things you can actually Google and you can find out corporations and products that support Israel. And then you can just individually start just not buying that shit no more. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because I told you guys I was in, God damn it, Target one day. And one of them, and I had, and because they have a Starbucks in there. And I got my little caramel um, Fenty Ice uh, Caramel Macchiato or whatever the shit it is. With extra, extra infinity, extra caramel. And I'm just a sipping. And one of my Muslim brothers happens to come into Target and sees me. Ah, oh, salam alaikum, you know, we have our moment. And he says, brother, what are you doing? I go, oh, this, oh, I go, this is, and I start, oh, this is my, my, my caramel macchiato, and I'm da 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 He goes, brother, they support Israel. Done. Have not had fucking caramel macchiato to this day, do you understand? You only need, you only need to tell me once. That's it, and I'm done. The goddamn it KFC, huh? 911 wasn't convincing enough of the need to fight Islamic terrorists after September uh, September 2001. Now, you see this? I got to make this contrast, everybody. I showed you the Orthodox Jews out there with their anti-Zionist signs. Here's a dude saying, I am Jewish and I want Israel to stop killing Palestinians. Where are the fucking white ass people in this country protesting white people that are fucking evil? Huh? Where's that at? Where's that at? Huh? Somebody tell me what channel I can go to to, to see that where I need to Google. Huh? Huh? No, because it doesn't exist. Silence is complicity. They agree. You see? There are thousands and thousands of these damn people like this dude that are visible and I've shown you where they had huge marches on Washington with just thousands as far as I could see denouncing Zionism where's the fucking thousands of thousands of white people marching on Washington to say we're over this white devil bullshit oh they don't exist I'm sorry I took up your time everybody let's go on it was Bali Madrid London and Mumbai with bombs raining down on Gaza right now I remember what the Israeli Prime Minister said he said we're all Israelis now I agree that terrorism is a problem and I know who the terrorists are <laughs> Dick Cheney told us to expect war for the next generation and drew up a list of 60 target countries General Wesley Clark informed us of Pentagon plans to go to war against seven countries in five. Now, are those just soldiers carrying out their job, huh? Are they just doing their job, everybody? Huh? Or are they personally invested in the hate? I ask you now. Because don't give me police are just doing their job. They signed up to carry out their hate. Five years. Iraq, Sudan, Somalia, Libya, Syria, Lebanon, and Iran. Syria is in process. And only Lebanon and Iran. See, she was saying this in 2012. So all this shit we're hearing about Syria and all of it, they already had that shit planned. I brought you the clip of, Wesley, of General Wesley Clark. because I'd been through the Pentagon right after 9-11, about 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me and he said, sir, you gotta come in, you gotta come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq, why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. 
So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later, and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, and he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. This is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq. My fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. And then Syria. We had a chance to talk about uh, a, a wide range of international issues, including the situation in Syria. Uh, and. I have to say that all of us who've been seeing the terrible pictures coming out of Syria and homes recently uh, recognize it is absolutely imperative for the international community to rally and send a clear message to President Assad that it is time for a transition, it is time for uh, that regime to move on, and it is try time to stop uh, the killing of Syrian citizens by their own government. Lebanon. They both had different reasons, the State Department and the White House, for wanting Israel to do it, encouraging them to do it, supporting them. Our Air Force worked very closely with the Israeli Air Force for months before this, not necessarily with a deadline, knowing when it would happen. It was always going to be whenever there was an incident, they would take advantage of an incident. Of, they would, the word I used was fortunate timing when the Hezbollah grabbed some of the um, Israeli soldiers in early ju July. That was then a pretext, I think that's the only word, for a major offensive that had been in the works a long time. Libya. Today we can definitively say that the Gaddafi regime has come to an end. The last major regime strongholds have fallen. The new government is consolidating the control over the country. And one of the world's longest serving dictators is no more. Somali. Well, violence isn't only on the rise in Afghanistan. In fact, it looks like America's shadow wars have now increased by one. Drone strikes have long been reported in Pakistan and Yemen, but now there's news that a week ago, a U.S. drone aircraft fired on two leaders of the Somalian organization Al-Shabaab. Sudan. President Obama is sending 100 combat-equipped troops to Central Africa to advise local forces on getting rid of one of the continent's most vicious operatives, Joseph Kony, the head of the Lord's Resistance Army, a group responsible for atrocities across the region. It's the first open deployment of U.S. ground combat power to Africa since the Black Hawk Down incident in Somalia in the 1990s that killed 18 troops. U.S. troops may wind up now in Uganda, South Sudan, the Central African Republic, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. It's part of a growing military effort to engage in Africa. Finishing off Iran. I said, is it classified? He said, yes, sir. I said, <laughs> I said, well, don't show it to me. And I saw him a year or so ago, and I said, you remember that? He said, sir, I didn't show you that memo. I didn't show it to you. Uh, I'm sorry, what did you say his name was? <laughs> I'm not going to give you his name. So go through the countries again? Well, starting with Iraq, then Syria and Lebanon, then Libya, then Somalia and Sudan. So that's what she's referencing right there. You see, that's what she's referencing. General Wesley Clark informed us of Pentagon plans to go to war against seven countries in five years. Iraq, Sudan, Somalia, Libya, Syria, Lebanon, and Iran. Mm -hmm. Syria is in process, and only Lebanon and Iran are left standing. But I'm sure their turn will come soon, too. General Wesley Clark called it a policy coup. 
He said that there had been a policy coup inside the United States. Not even one month ago, the former number two. I feel like we need to read this and then we'll go back so that we don't forget, so that we pick up her context. Uh, use of America's financial military media strength to push forward Israel's fucked up agenda. Use clandestine operations such as Anti-Defamation League, Southern Poverty Law Center, uh, Canadian Human Rights Commission, I think that's Canadian, uh, Commission, and others to, let me go back, maybe it gets a little clearer. Nope. Um, for, and others to something to squelch, I think, op opposition for unwavering support of Israel and its actions, I think. Use of foreign agenda, use of foreign agents, employees of America, Israel Public Affairs Commission to threaten the government to push forward Israel's agenda. Dominance of world's financial institutions to ensure wealth and money flow to organized Jewry and Israel. Coup. He said that there had been a policy coup inside the United States. Not even one month ago, the former number two at the State Department. Use of media to use of media to strong arm politicians and to place Israel in a positive light to ensure support of its policies, I think. Use of intelligence agencies, Mossad to eliminate possible threats that can cause the end of support of Israel or be eliminated or t or I can't read it. Lawrence Wilkerson, Colin Powell's right hand man. Or to eliminate politicians who would oppose its said agenda. Said that what has happened in the U.S. is worse now than we'll a coup. Now we'll go back and I'll shut up. The Pentagon plans to go to war against seven countries in five years. Iraq, Sudan, Somalia, Libya, Syria, Lebanon, and Iran. Syria is in process and only Lebanon and Iran are left standing. But I'm sure their turn will come soon too. General Wesley Clark called it a policy coup. He said that there had been a policy coup inside the United States. Not even one month ago, the former number two at the State Department, Lawrence Wilkerson, Colin Powell's right-hand man, said that what has happened in the U.S. is worse than a coup. The U.S. media would have you believe that the U.S. is divided. None white versus white, Christian versus Muslim, native born versus immigrant, white versus Latino. I disagree with that. I've traveled into every nook and cranny of the United States, and I can tell you that people are united and sick and tired of war. The meme of division is developed by those who write the scripts in order to pit us against each other. That way, we forget See? to... Divide and conquer, capitalism, American, nationality, African or anti-American, communism, Asian, black, rights, Republican, conservative, pro-life, Muslim, Jewish, all the bullshit. That way, we forget to focus on those who planned September 11th, those who profiteer from war and killing, and those who, like cowards, vote to send our young men and women off to fight someone else's wars or worse, remain silent even while whole countries are being destroyed. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said that our lives begin to end the moment we remain silent about the things that really matter. I love that quote so much too. Dr. King said our lives begin to end the moment we remain silent about the shit that matters. Our whole countries are being destroyed. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said that our lives begin to end the moment we remain silent about the things that really matter. 
He also said there comes a time when silence is betrayal. When, when, when silence is betrayal, and I'll read this. When we, look around, when we look at modern man, we have to face the fact that modern man suffers from a kind of poverty of the spirit, which stands in glaring, I, we're not going to say man. When we look around, when we look at modern white people, we have to face the fact that they suffer from a poverty of the spirit because they don't have one which stands in glaring contrast to African people who actually have one and with scientific and techn technical technological abundance we've learned to fly the air as birds we've learned to swim the seas as fish yet we haven't learned to walk the earth as brothers and sisters and we never will as long as their white asses exist that's what it says right there it says it I heard those words too. So while I hope that my actions combined with the actions of millions of others who also want justice and peace will change the world, the best I can do right now is to change myself. I am now in a PhD program that I absolutely love and I'm studying leadership and change. We need both. And I've added new meaning to that word in my Look how Obama looked there, y'all, when his hair was just black. <laughs> Man, the brother is still GQ. I don't give a damn what nobody say. So I'm saying Obama is G, goddammit, Q. I understand that. And I've added new meaning to that word in my vocabulary, resistance. I wake up every morning and I ask myself, what can I do to resist war and injustice today? Today is the beginning of people who hunger and thirst for the truth to come together. I know that there is a worldwide community that is ready to know what happened on September 11th, as I have said too many times. We all know what we saw, but how did it happen? As a member of Congress, I... And I remind you, that's not a building collapsing. That is a building turning to fucking dust in front of your eyes. You see? How you think and speak about anything is how you relate and react. When you hear somebody say, and, with, with, I, and then I saw the buildings collapsing, the bitch, where, what planet were you on? Because the buildings weren't collapsing. This was not an earthquake. Set your ass down. But how did it happen? Look. As a member of Congress, I asked. Turning to dust in front of you. There, are th there were hundreds of elevators in each of those buildings. Untold escalators, huh? Just that alone. But you don't find a single piece of the building. Nothing but dust and particles. And that was a collapse? I think not. I lived in California when they had the quote-unquote Northridge quake, which it wasn't the Northridge quake because I lived my raggedy ass in goddammit Reseda and the epicenter was two blocks from my house on a street called Wilbur. That's where the fucking um, seismologist thing said that that's where the epicenter was, but that wasn't glamorous. Oh, it's Northridge. It's Northridge. I know what a collapsed building looks like and that ain't it. How could the U.S invest trillions of dollars in an intelligence and military infrastructure and it failed four times in one day. As a black person, I knew that the Bush administration explanation of the U.S. being hit because we were free couldn't hold water. I love that she said that as a black person because that's so testimonial of us. Like when we hear bullshit, we know it's some bullshit. And that's... <laughs> I love Ekba. We all said that. Everybody I know was like, when he was like, well, why they attack us? Well, they hate us because of freedom. <laughs> they hate us because of freedom. Damn that freedom. <sighs> We've just got all this freedom, everybody. I'm just up to my ears in freedom. You understand? It's just all this freedom. <sighs> I can't. I have said too many times, we all know what we saw, but how did it happen? As a member of Congress, I asked, how could the U.S. invest trillions of dollars in an intelligence and military infrastructure and it fail four times in one day? By the way, the orange tulip, long before he ever ran for president, 
after 9 11 because remember he's into he's he's a real estate guy he builds buildings and he was aware of the construction of, of how the, well these buildings have been constructed and there's an interview of him saying there was definitely explosives used there there's a great deal of question about whether or not the damage and, and the ultimate destruction of the buildings was caused by the airplanes, by architectural defect, or possibly by bombs or, or aftershocks. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, it was an architectural defect. You know, the World Trade Center was always known as a very, very strong building. Don't forget, that took a big bomb in the basement. Now, the basement is the most vulnerable place because that's your foundation. And it withstood that. And I got to see that area about three or four days after it took place because one of my structural engineers actually took me for a tour because he did the building. And I said, I can't believe it. The building was standing solid and half of the columns were blown out. I mean, so this was an unbelievably powerful building. Uh, if you know anything about structure, it was one of the first buildings that was built from the outside. The steel, the reason the World Trade Center had such narrow windows is that in between all the windows, you had the steel on the outside. So you had the steel on the outside of the building. That's why when I first looked, and you had big, heavy I-beams. When I first looked at it, I couldn't believe it because there was a hole in the steel. And this is steel that was, you remember the, the width of the windows in the World Trade Center, folks. I think, you, you know, if you were ever up there, they were quite narrow. And in between was this heavy steel. I said, how could a plane, even a plane, even a 767 or 747 or whatever it might have been, how could it possibly go through the steel? I happen to think that they had not only a plane, but they had bombs that exploded almost simultaneously, because I just can't imagine anything being able to go through that wall. Most buildings are built with the steelers on the inside around the elevator shaft. This one was built from the outside, which is the strongest structure you can have, and it was almost just like a, uh, like a can of soup. You know, Donald, we were looking at pictures all morning long of that plane coming into uh, building number two, and when you see that uh, approach the the far side, and then all of a sudden, within a matter of a millisecond, the explosion pops out the other side. Right. I just think that it was a plane with more than just fuel. I think, obviously, they were very big planes. They were going very rapidly because I was also watching where the plane seemed to be not only going fast, it seemed to be coming down into the building. So it was getting the speed from going downhill, so to speak. Uh, it just seemed to me that to do that kind of destruction is even more than a big plane because you're talking about taking out steel, the heaviest caliber steel that was used on a building. I mean, these buildings were rock solid. And, uh, you know, it's just an amazing, it's an amazing thing. You see, that was the orange tulip. Wonder what he says now. As a black person, I knew that the Bush administration explanation of the U.S. being hit because we were free couldn't hold water because an election had just been stolen and the people of the United States weren't free. <laughs> and they're even less so today. This exercise in revisiting 911 and seeking the truth could serve a great cause in helping people have the courage to face the truth about our current course. This mere informational ex I can't let it go by everybody. We gotta look, we gotta eat everything that's on the plate. See that guy? To face the truth about our current course. And see that guy? Not the same person. This is Sheikh Osama bin Laden. You understand? My Muslim brother. Period. In helping that people other one, not bin Laden. Have the courage to face Look at the nose. Face the truth. Look at the eyes, Maury. Look at the look at the lips, Maury. Look at the nose, Maury. I'm a thousand percent <laughs> Such a bitch. <laughs> now look look at that dude closely especially the nose about our current and the course. cheeks and the lips boom 
not the same dude. This mere that is Osama. Informational exercise with resolve could result in a concrete end to impunity. Finally, two thoughts. One, we need people with a moral compass in public office today. We need people willing to resist injustice and war in public office. Members of the Bush administration committed crimes against the American people, as well as international crimes, some of which have no statute of limitations. That continues under President Obama. The only way we can arrest this lawlessness is to hold them to account, not just in people's tribunals, which have their place, but also in courtrooms around the world. The last thing I want to mention is about stand down orders. Pay very close attention. That is not Osama. I'm over it. But you see, it goes to the dumb ignorance, the unequaled ignorance of the American public. You can just put this guy in a thobe or a galabia and give him a beard and a kufi and or a kufi cap and they oh look it's osama well it's him the ironic part is osama was a very youthful looking man it's but you know it's like his gray beard almost betrayed him he was a handsome man even he's six eight tall you see and this dude was not fucking Osama. I'm over it. Pay very Look. close attention to what is happening in the U.S. around Benghazi Gate, as it is being called. A U.S. ambassador and three security agents are dead because someone reportedly issued a stand down order three times. At least. And it was sniper fire. That's why she doesn't like to talk about Benghazi. You see? Lying whore. Down order three times. At least one general has been fired reportedly because he ignored the stand down order and went to the rescue. As we revisit Secretary of Transportation Mineta's 911 testimony, the issue of a stand down order arises. If a stand down order was given to allow events to transpire in Benghazi, might that be relevant in a different setting? In short, we must never again allow this level of criminality in those who have positional authority over us. Never again. Now, with the chairman's indulgence, I have a short video that I'd like to show that on how I practice my own resistance. Imagine the US. Imagine Israel, Palestine. Imagine Libya, Somalia, Yemen, and Pakistan. Imagine China and Russia. Imagine Latin America with, imagine Malaysia if we had average See, Osama? You see how he looks there? <clears throat> America with, imagine Malaysia, if we had average ordinary Americans with morality and compassion making U.S. foreign policy. Incredibly, just in the last few days, 535 members of Congress united. 535 members of Congress. That's the entire fucking Congress. Let's do that lead in so you don't hear so you don't miss that. Incredibly, just in the last few days, 535 members of Congress unanimously voted to support Israel's Operation Pillar of Cloud. To support Israel's fake bitch asses, you see? All of them on fucking Capitol Hill are goddamn Zionists. Every single one of them. No, they can't vote on health care. We're divided on that. 
oh, we can't um, bring down gas prices. We're divided on that. They're divided on every goddamn thing. But 530, all 535 of their fake bitch asses can all vote to lick the ass of this satanic Zionist ass, goddammit, unholy, demonic ass Israel. May Allah destroy it from the earth today. And I'll conclude with this. Bobby Kennedy who almost became president of the United States, but assassin's bullets cut him down instead, said, some men see things as they are and say why. I dream things that never were and say why not. And say why not. I as love they that. are pinned down instead. I see what this is then. Said, some men see things as they are when we look at modern man, we have to face the fact that modern man suffers from a kind of... Oh, wait, that was the same quote. And say why. Wait, no. We learn... Oh, yeah, we should hear that. I dream things that never were. I dream things that never were and say why not. I love that quote. And say why not. I love that. I love that. I love that. So I wanted everybody to be familiar with this Important for us as a people. Because she is that. She is that. And I also will add that, you know, she ran uh, for president. Um, it was under the Green Party, I believe. I feel like it was the Green Party. Obviously, it got nowhere because, um, but there was a lot of um, excitement around her. Because she's a, she's a well-known entity. Uh, really good name recognition. And, um, but because in this society, they only want to give you the either or, not a buffet of choices, you see, it's either or, and they box you in with that and everything. It's either this or that. That's why I've always preached to my people, I need you to throw that out <clears throat> and be, and start thinking in the context of both and, not either or, throw that out, throw that out. It's anti-intellectual. Adopt both and and both and because it expands your 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 range of thinking and understanding and it allows you uh more resolutions when it comes to any issue that you're dealing with and also how to discern anything that you are experiencing or witnessing you see both and not either or both and both and so to nona once again i say thank you um apparently we were on the same spiritual plane for this that the universe was lining up our energies at that moment literally subhanallah wow wow um, you guys, uh, shout out to K.R. Watkins because I am going to do a dissertation on the five-hour R. Kelly song. Um, I was actually 19 when I started listening to it. I was 35 when I finished, so that's what I'm dealing with. Uh, that's what I'm working through. Uh, but I want to do a dissertation on that. I want to do a dissertation on that because there was a lot of things that really um, attached themselves to the fabric of my energy source. There was a sincerity, there was a, um, a yearning, and there was also, the universe was giving me visions of potential suicide. And I want to talk about that so that may 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 be my next video um yeah shout out to Akibalon Violet I love you um Mel you already know it's all love Mika my girl um Pamela Williams just some random names Marcus you are a lion um, Diva Queen Lopez, I love you. 
uh, CJ Mendoza, I love you. I love your children. I want to bite them. Oh, my little cardito. Um, um, Miss Empress, I love you. Um, Ancient Melanin, Black Fist in the Air, my brother. Uh, Kai, Kai, <clears throat> as I choke. Kai, Black Fist in the Air, my brother. Terrence Bowers, Black Fist, my brother. Daniel, my brother on the ground in Baltimore, Black Fist. Um, to all of my women, just all of y'all, all of y'all, every single damn one of you, all my love to you, all my love to you, all my love to you, all my love. Thank you for your loyalty and your support and just holding me up and holding me down. I love you guys so much. I have the best women on my damn platform and any on and, and, and on any of the any damn platform nobody else can make the claim I have the best women responsive intelligent intellectual deep beautiful kind patient loving giving caring oh, I love you all so much I you have to know that I love you I love you. I love you. I love you. So, um, yeah, I just, I didn't even know I was going to do that, everybody. That was just the inspiration from the universe right then. So, any, any of the brothers I didn't shout out is no love lost. Just like I say, it was just, that was random. Um, some people are always at the forefront of my mind because they are a constant um, presence and things like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm also threatening everybody. I'm threatening an impromptu either a live stream or a Skype session. I'm threatening one of those. I'm threatening. And it may not be one or it might be both and. I might do a live stream Skype session. Yeah. So if you think you'd like to be in on that, holler at your boy in the comments and let me know if you if I get enough people, at least twenty, then we'll we'll go forward with that. Yeah. So Cynthia McKinney, everybody, and so your homework is to then now go and Google her and find out um other things about her so that you can just be well acquainted with um her fully. You know outside of what I've been able to bring for you because there's a plethora of stuff about her on the internet videos articles everything I mean she is a known quantity and she is everywhere and she has a lot of accolade and a lot of experience and a lot of things that she's done under her belt as far as humanitarian work activism uh, outside of her political stuff and all of that so that is a queen that is a queen, Cynthia McKinney. I leave it here, you guys. I'll see you soon. We are in a race between education and catastrophe.